Dear students, I am Dr. Vaip Agrawal, Professor Emeritus, Kurukshetra University. The module that we are going to present before you is on measure of central tendency, median and mode. The objectives of this module are to learn these meanings and rationale of median and mode. The students will learn the methods of calculation of median and mode. The students will learn the situations where these can be used. Measures of central tendency popularly used include mean, median, and mode. They are used in different situations and statistical analysis. In the previous module, a method of calculation of mean has been given. In the present module, the concept, calculations, and uses of median and mode are given. Number one, the median or MDN. The median symbolized by MDN is the point that divides the distribution into two parts, such that an exactly equal number of scores fall above and fall below the point. It means that 50% of the scores will be above the median and the remaining 50% below it. The computation of the median varies under different circumstances. The same is given below. First of all, I'm going to tell you about the ungrouped data. When there is an odd number of scores in the distribution, then we use the following method for the calculation of median. From distributions which have an odd number of scores, but no duplication of scores near the median, the median is the middle score. The series is to be arranged in an ascending or descending order. For example, consider the distribution 6, 4, 8, 7, and 10. Arranging these scores in ascending order, we find 4, 6, 7, 8, and 10. Further find that the middle value is 7, which is the median. It divides the distribution into two equal halves. Number 2. When there is an even number of scores in the distribution, and how to calculate median from this situation. When there is an even number of scores and there is no duplication of scores near the median, the average of the middle two scores is taken as the median. The scores must be arranged in ascending or descending order. For example, consider the distribution 6, 4, 8, 7, 10, and 5. Arranging the scores in ascending order, we find 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10. Median is equal to sum of the middle two scores divided by 2. We find that 6 and 7 are the two middle scores. Hence, 6 plus 7 divided by 2 is equal to 6.5, which is our median. This convention applies even if the scores near the median are not adjacent. For example, in a series of scores, 4, 5, 6, 10, 11, and 14. The median is the average of the two middle scores. Now, median is equal to 6 plus 10 divided by 2 is equal to 8. Number 3, when there is a duplication of scores near the median, when more than one instance of score value falling near the median exists, the median is obtained by interpolation. Now, I'm going to show you how to do it. When there's an even number. Example, consider the distribution 4, 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, and 8. The situation is diagrammed below in figure 2. The scores occupying the space on the scale of measurement between their real limits have been shown. Since four of the eight scores are required to be below the median, the median must fall within the interval 5.5 to 6.5. Since the two scores already fall below that interval, two of the three scores existing between 5.5 and 6.5 are required to be below the median. Therefore, two-thirds or 0.67 of the one unit interval is added to its lower limit. That is 5.5 plus 0.67. This gives me 
6.17. Examine figure 2 carefully and consider the fractions of frequencies and you will notice that the distribution is divided by half at the point 6.17 and median is equal to 6.17. Take a look at figure 1 which is about the computation of the median when there is duplication of scores and the number of scores is even. You will see that the real upper and lower limits of the class intervals have been taken. 3.5, 4.5, 5.5, 6.5, 7.5, 8.5 and the number of frequencies are shown above each of these intervals. We will find that the middle class interval that is 5.5 and 6.5 has been divided into two parts. The first part takes away two thirds of the class interval and the second part takes only one third of the interval. Hence, we are adding 0.67 to the lower limit of this class interval that is 5.5 plus 0.67 and this gives us the same value of median which is 6.17. The situation is diagrammed below in figure 1. Dear students, I am going to show you the calculation of median when there are odd number of cases. Example, when there are an odd number of scores, the solution proceeds in the same manner as above. Suppose a distribution contains the following nine scores 4, 5, 6, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8, and 8. The median falls within the score interval 5.5 to 6.5. In the diagram shown in figure 2, the score occupying the space on the scale of measurement between their real limits have been shown. Since there are in all nine scores in the distribution, four and a half of them must be below the median. Again, two scores exist between 5.5 and therefore two and a half of the three scores in one interval 5.5 to 6.5 must also fall below the median. The above situation is shown in the following calculation. Now, this is 2.5 upon 3 is equal to 5.2 upon 3 is equal to 5.6 is equal to 0.83 of the one unit interval. 0.83 must also fall below the median. Therefore, the median is equal to 5.5 plus 0.83 that is 6.33. The student may notice in figure 2 the 0.6.33 divides the distribution into exact two halves. Take a look at figure 2. Now, it, it is the base is divided in terms of the class intervals like 3.5 to 4.5, 4.5 to 5.5, 5.5 to 6.5, 7.5 to 8.5 and the middle interval 5.5 to 6.5 is further divided into two parts. The first part is 5 upon 6 and the other part is 1 upon 6. Now, 5 upon 6 is equal to 0.83. This has been added to 5.5 to obtain a value of median which is 6.33. Now, the procedure and the logic presented above is quite simple and follows a layman's approach to such problems. We can also have a formula for the calculation of median as given below. Now, the formula shows median is equal to L plus within bracket N upon 2 minus FB upon FW times I. Now, the symbols are like this. L stands for the lower limit of the interval containing the median, which is in our example is 5.5. N stands for the number of scores in the total distribution, which is 9. 
FB stands for the number of cases falling below the limit of interval containing the median, which is 2. FW, the number of scores within the interval containing the median. In our example, it is 3. I stands for the size of the class interval, which is 1. Substituting the values in the formula, we have median is equal to 5.5 plus within bracket 9 upon 2 minus 2 upon 3 times 1 is equal to 5.5 plus 2.5 upon 3. It gives me 5.5 plus 0.83 is equal to then 6.33, which is the final value. Dear students, I am going to show you the calculation of median from a frequency distribution. In calculating the median from data grouped in the form of a frequency distribution, the problem is to determine a value of the variable such that one half of the observations fall above this, the other half below this. The fundamental logic of calculation remains the same as already described in relation to the ungrouped data. The method will be illustrated with reference to the data in table 1. Table 1 shows the calculation of median. It has four columns. First column shows class intervals, second exact limits of the class intervals, and third shows the frequency in each of the class interval, and column 4 shows the cumulative frequency. You will see that the lowest class interval is 5 to 9 and the topmost class interval is 45 to 49 and the exact limits have been given against each of these and then we have the frequencies against each of these and the last column that's column number 4 we have the cumulative frequencies and this shows a particular value which says median lies in this class interval. The formula for the calculation of median from a frequency distribution is like this. Median is equal to L plus within brackets n upon 2 minus Fb upon Fw times I, where L stands for exact lower limit of the Ci in which median lies. Fb cumulative frequency below the Ci containing the median. Fw stands for frequency within the CI containing the median. Here, in our example, L is equal to 19.5, Fb is equal to 21, Fw is equal to 8, I is equal to 5. And the calculation of median is like this. The median is equal to 19.5 plus, within brackets, 50 upon 2 minus 21 divided by 38 times 5. Now, this, is, this further shows 19.5 plus 25 minus 21 upon 8 times 5. And then further 19.5 plus 4 upon 8 times 5 is equal to 19.5 plus 2.5 is equal to 22. Dear students, I am now going to show you the computational steps. First, record the cumulative frequencies as shown in column 4 of the table. Step number 2, determine n upon 2, one half of the number of cases. In this example, 50 upon 2 is equal to 25. Third step, identify the class interval in which the 25th case, the middle case, falls. In this example, it is the class interval which is 20 to 24 with exact limits 19.5 to 24.5. Fourth, interpolate between the exact limits of the interval to find a value above and below which 25 cases lie. Observe that eight cases fall within the limits 19.5 to 24.5. We assume that these eight cases are uniformly distributed in rectangular fashion between these exact limits. Now, to arrive at the 25th or middle case, we require four of the eight cases within this interval because the cumulative frequency below this interval is 21, which shows that 21 cases have been covered up to 19.5. The upper limit of Ci 
15 to 19. This means that we find a point between 19.5 and 24.5, such as four cases fall below and four cases fall above it. The proportion of the interval was we require is 4 upon 8, which is 4 upon 8 times 5 units of scores or 2.5. We add this to the lower limit of the interval to obtain median, which is 19.5 plus 2.5 is equal to 22. The formula and the calculations shown in table are quite easy. And the student can follow the same with convenience. How about the steps mentioned above are summarized below. Number one, compute the cumulative frequencies. Number two, determine n upon two or one half of the cases. Number three, find the class interval in the middle case falls and determine the exact limits of the interval. Number four, interpolate to find a value on the scale below which and above which one half of the total number of cases falls. This is the median. Now, I am going to show you the calculation of median when the frequency distribution contains gaps. Students may experience difficulty in the calculation of median when there are gaps or zero frequencies upon one or more intervals near the center of the distribution. The method to be followed in such cases is shown in table 2. Now, we have the value of i which is 10 and the size of the extended class interval of 10 to 19. Since n is equal to 20, n upon 2 is equal to 10, count up the frequency column 10 scores from below. Ordinarily, 14.5, the upper limit of ci 10 to 14 should have been taken as the median. However, by counting down 10 scores from the frequency column, we arrive at 24.5, the lower limit of class intervals 25 to 29. To resolve this discrepancy, the value of the median by the two approaches of counting up from below, counting down from above, we extend the middle class intervals. Here, this class interval 10 to 14 is extended up to 19 with a new size of 10. The class interval 25 to 29 is extended down to 20, which is a new size of 10. Lengthening of these intervals removes the zero frequency on the adjacent intervals by spreading the numerical frequency over the CIs having zero frequencies and creating confusion in the correct calculation of the median. Now, counting up from below, we complete 10 frequencies at 19.5, the upper limit of class interval 10 to 19. Counting down from the above also gives a median of 19.5, the lower limit of class interval 20 to 29. Computation from the two ends of the distribution will ex with extended CIs near the median as shown in the table now gives consistent results. In cases where there is only one zero frequency exactly at the center of the distribution, the midpoint of the interval having this zero will be the median. The same logic can be used in cases having three or more zeros. Dear students, now I am going to show you the meanings and the calculation of mode. The mode is the most frequently occurring score. When a frequency distribution is used, the mode is the midpoint of the interval, the largest number of cases or frequencies. If two adjacent scores have the same frequency and the frequencies are the highest in the distribution, then the mode is the sum of the two scores divided by two. When there are two non-adjacent scores with the same frequency, they are the highest in the distribution, each score may be referred to as the mode and the distribution is called bimodal. Consider the following sets of scores to understand the method of calculation of mode from each. Set 1, we have the scores 5, 5, 10, 10, 10, 11, 11, 11, 13, 13, 13, 
13, 14, 14, and 15, and 15. The mode, since score 13 occurs the largest number of times, that is, as a frequency of 4, it is the value of the mode. Now, we have a second situation. Scores 5, 5, 10, 10, 12, 12, 12, 13, 13, 13, 14, 14, 14, and 15, and 15. Now, the adjacent score of 12 with 13 have the largest but equal frequencies of 3 each. Hence, the average of these two values will be the mode, which is 12 plus 13 divided by 2. That is 12.5, set 3. Now, we have the scores 5, 5, 10, 10, 10, 12, 12, 12, 13, 13, 14, 14, 14, 15, 15. Mode. The non-adjacent values of 12 and 14 have the largest but equal frequency of 3 each. Hence, this set of score has two modes, 12 and 14. It can thus be called the bimodal distribution. We have a fourth situation. The scores are 7, 7, 8, 8, 10, 10, 11, 11, 13, 13, and 16, and 16. Here, all values occur the frequency of 2. Hence, do not permit the calculation of a modal value. In this case, mode is indeterminate. It is a rectangular shape distribution with equal frequency on all the score points. Now, the next situation is calculation of mode in a frequency distribution. When scores are grouped in frequency distribution, the mode is the midpoint of the interval with the largest frequency. Hence, consider the following frequency distribution. In the first column, we have the scores in terms of class intervals. In the second column, we have the frequencies. Frequencies add up to 40, and then the mode is the midpoint of the class interval 15 to 19. We can calculate this like this. Mode is equal to the lower limit plus upper limit upon 2. That is 15 upon 19 upon 2. That is 17. So the value of mode is 17. This is also called the crude mode or the empirical mode. It may be distinguished from the true mode, which is the point or peak of the greatest concentration of scores in the distribution. The crude mode is approximately equal to the true mode and serve most of the practical purposes. This is also called the crude mode or the empirical mode. It may be distinguished from the true mode, which is the point or peak of the greatest concentration of score in the distribution. The crude mode is approximately equal to the true mode and serve most of the practical purposes. Formula for approximating the true mode from the symmetrical and not badly skewed distributions is mode is equal to 3 median minus 2 mean. In the frequency distribution given here, median is equal to 19.5, mean is equal to 20.4. Hence, mode is equal to 3 times 19.5 minus 2 times 20.4. That is equal to 17.7. Dear students, now I am going to tell you the limitations of mode. The mode is a measure of very limited practical value. It does not lend itself readily to further algebraic manipulations. It does not, in general, enter into the calculations or further statistical analysis. It may acquire meaning if the number of measurements under considerations are fairly very large. Dear students, Generally, the question arises as to when and where do we use one of these three measures of center tendency, the mean, the median, or the mode. Here is a guide to tell you as to where these can be used with profit. The following simple rules may prove helpful to the puzzled student as to when to use the various measures of center tendency. Mean is useful when scores are symmetrically or nearly symmetrically distributed around a central point. Number two, when the situation warrants a measure of central tendency having the greatest stability. Number three, when the researcher wishes to compute standard deviation 
coefficient of correlation and other statistics which are based upon the mean. The median is useful in the following situations. When the exact midpoint separating the distribution into two equal halves is wanted. Number two, the extreme scores are present in the distribution. Extreme scores affect the mean more than the median. Number three, when the number of scores above or below the central tendency is known, but not their exact values. Number four, when the upper exact limit of the top class intervals or the lower exact limit of the lowest class intervals is not known. That is, the frequency distribution is not complete. Now, mode can be useful in the following situations. When a quick measure is all what is wanted. Number two, when an approximate measure of central tendency would do. Number three, when only the most typical value is required. For example, the most typical size of the shirt or shoes worn by an average man. Dear students, you have seen the meaning, the concept, and the rationale of median and mode. We have also seen the calculation of median and mode in different situations. These are useful concepts and these can be used with great profit whenever they are needed and the student can use them in their research and other statistical work. Thank you very much.